So today I'm going to be showing you this Dara Mate uh, 545 under folder. This is a Kyber AK, fully handmade, fully made. In, they use machines, it's not completely handmade, but they're hand fitted. Um, so this particular one is a Type 3 copy, uh, chambered in 545, and it's an under folder. Um, I'm going to break this one down for you now and show you the internals. Just give me a moment. So, as you can see here, standard top cover. Um, now, if we can focus in on it, there we go. Standard top cover. These obviously stamped and uh, made in tribal areas. Um, one interesting thing you can note is that these actually, some of these parts are numbered with the number seven. You can see them on very, in various areas. I'm not sure if they're trying to match parts together or it's just, you know, for show, really. Um, yeah, so this actual part, you can see it's, it's decently made. Standard Type 3 configuration. Same thing with the recoil, the recoil assembly. This one looks like it's off a Type 2 or copied off a Type 2. You can see again there's a number 7 stamped into it. If I can focus there, the number 7 stamped into it. Uh, and it's, it's like a Type 2 recoil assembly. It has a, um, a rod instead of two um, springs inside, two, two rods, which obviously um, um, close within each other. Now, take a look at this bolt. This hasn't been cleaned in an extremely long time, so I haven't actually cleaned this yet. I'm going to attempt to clean it in a moment. Now, if you look at this bolt, if you look at this bolt, it's been machined from one piece of steel. You can see some crudeness in it. If you look at this, this lug, it has been used. And the lug, if we can get it to focus, it does have some wear on it, very light wear. And there, look at this, the extractor. It works correctly, stiff spring, nice and stiff. Um, it's not spring-loaded spring firing pin. Uh, it seems to work okay. I'll have a firing video up soon for this particular AK. And you can see here how soft the, uh, the actual metal is. This is where the lug impacts. So this is cause for concern over here. However, it does function. Um, it does function correctly. As you can see there are, there are, um, There again, there's, there's a number seven marked in there, stamped in there, and also machining marks. Um, there are some mm, deformities in here as well. There's some, uh, it hasn't been machined completely well, you can say. This particular one is a full auto, however, it has a semi auto only selector at the moment. I cannot find the full auto one. Um, so, for now, I'll just show you uh, its semi-auto capability. Um, obviously, this is it's it's been screwed and staked in right there. Uh, there's the pin if I can get it to focus. Right there. Yeah. And I'm just gonna put that back together again. There we go. Now we're going to look at the actual trigger mechanism. Um, as you can see again, now if I can get it into a position, if you look at that there, that trigger, the hammer, sorry, has taken a beating. Like I said, softer metals, they're not heat treated correctly and they're not weapons grade, so they'll get damaged very quickly. Um, yeah internals standard selector i'm just going to pull that out for you as well uh, it's a standard semi-auto only so it has a notch cut into it to only allow uh, it to be used in semi-auto 
There you go. So obviously it cannot catch the. Uh, it cannot go into uh, into full auto. So obviously triggers inoperable. It works complete. It works exactly like a traditional A key. Yep, and if you look at the machining marks on there, you can see it is a little bit crude. You can see the actual, you can see that they're using dull tools, and dull, you know, in the production. Finish isn't that great either. Uh, finish, when you use this, and when they get old, the finish, you know, easily comes off. This pistol grip is also made in the, in the tribal areas, it's not an original. They make these. And if I show you the hand guards. You can see the grain in them as well. Very nice. This particular upper hand guard is Chinese. It's actually a Chinese lower which has been cut to fit the upper. And it was on an underfolder previously, you can tell that from the, the marks right there, where the underfolder uh, would hit the lower hand guard. So this, the barrel, gas block and front sight blocks are all, are all machined from one piece. So these are not removable at all in any way. Um, they're not removable in any way. They machine directly onto this uh, barrel and the barrel is ringed. Um, which is kind of confusing. I mean, if you want to replace parts or something like that, uh, it makes for an, uh, an utter nightmare. You might as well get a new rifle. Um, yeah. So this particular one, this uh, is an issue I'm having here is that the pin for the underfolder has walked out. So it's it still works, but there is a headache. It, gives, it does give a headache when using it because uh, the pin it won't fall out the bottom, but it won't seat. It's not seated correctly, so it does get stuck. Um, yeah. So that's a quick look at this rifle. Uh, I will have a shooting video up very soon for you, and if I can get this in, and I can get it working again. Then I'll have it done. I'll just go over it one more time once it's back together again. Just want to point out the markings here, um, these semi-auto markings on here. So these are obviously made for commercial markets, so they're semi-automatic only, however you can change out the selector and they're basically full automatic then. So that's the rifle. It's an interesting piece. It's an interesting piece to say the least. Um, the way they make these is pretty awesome actually. Um, yeah, I'll have a few more videos up on rifles just to show you what they're like soon and also some shooting videos as well once I get round to that. Thanks for watching.